to our call. We're going to get started as usual with news you can use. We're going to do something a little bit different today. We're going to talk about some projects. Uh, first of all, I'm going to talk about the news. Then I'm going to talk about the reality of what's going on. Um, there was an article that came out on CNBC both a month ago, actually it was the 12th of April, and then one that came out a few days ago, talking about how the majority of homes that are on the market listed on the MLS are now getting offers below um, the asking price and significant amounts uh, of below, like 85 to 90% are not even getting to the ask price. A month ago, about 12% of the off of the listings on MLS nationwide had to be dropped in price. Now it's about 60%, you know, just in a month's time. Um, so we knew it was gonna come, we didn't know it was gonna come this fast. Um, so our prices dropping everywhere? Is everybody getting less than ask? Um, are there many, many less offers on a single house? Um, generally across the board, yes, yes, and yes, on all three of those. However, there are exceptions to the rule. It depends on the market. Real estate is always a uh, local thing, you know, how, what is the demand versus the type of product, uh, so on and so forth. And it really depends. So I'm going to walk you through two deals uh, that we've actually done that we were that I was involved with, um, and and kind of go through one that was sold in December and what it would be worth today, um, and another one that we just put into escrow that we sold, and we're going to walk you through the numbers so you can kind of see how this thing works and give you really a sense of the dichotomy of the market. So the first one was in El Dorado Hills. Uh, it was a property, uh, I don't know if you can put up a, a Terracina or not, uh, just so we can look at it, uh, Ash. Yep, yeah, I've got it for you. All right, let's just put a picture up. This is a property in El Dorado Hills, and it was sold for 1. 1.65, a million that's a good shot all we need right there uh 1.65 million in december um it would it had been bought a year or two before for a significantly less dollar amount and there was a, a minus minor amount of rehab done maybe twenty thousand, and then it was put on the market at probably the peak 1.65 that same house today and believe it or not this is although this looks like a really nice custom house and on the other side, there's a view that goes on forever, you know, out looking in over Sacramento and things like that. It's a beautiful view. Um, this is actually would be considered like tract home. In other words, there's a number of homes that are exactly like this that have been built in this development. All those is a real high end development. Today, there are two homes on the market with the exact floor plan, same number of bedrooms, bathrooms. They look very similar. Both of them uh, have been dropped to now in the 1.35 range. So from 1.65 to 1.35 uh, is a pretty significant drop for that market up there. Um, why is that? We're gonna talk about that in a minute. All right, I'm gonna tell you about another one that uh, we just put into escrow. And before we show this picture, I'm gonna go through the numbers. So if you wanna bring your your whiteboard up, uh, we'll talk, we'll, we'll kind of walk through these numbers on this particular project and show you what you can do out there. So there's an example of a market that has definitely gone down and there's a lot of factors, which I'll talk about in a few minutes, but um, this is a market here. This next one is in Wisconsin. It's in a town called Burlington, uh, Wisconsin. And uh, it was, a rehab. Now it was what we call a prehab type project. I'll show you the pictures later on, uh, but first let's go through the numbers. So the house was bought for four hundred fifty thousand. We're going to have about ten numbers. We're going to put down here uh, four hundred and fifty k or four hundred fifty thousand was purchase price. Um, total uh, cost, interest cost, uh, closing cost, finance charge because it was borrowed money. Uh, was around $30,000, roughly. Uh, commissions, uh, rehab, yeah, financial costs going in. Uh, rehab uh, was about $2,000 on this particular house. Uh, commissions are going to be about $40,000, sales commissions. There was one payment made to the lender of $5,000. 
and there's about seven thousand dollars of closing costs on the sale side okay so if my math is right that is about uh 535 if i'm correct five hundred thirty-five thousand. okay now this property was 100 percent financed um no money out of pocket uh you can go ahead and put the total under 535,000. I think it's the right number. Pretty close to that. 535, 534, something like that. Yeah. Um, this particular house uh, and the loan, we were able to overfund it. So we bought the house with no money out of pocket, with 100% financing, and we got a check back for 27000 roughly $27,000. So we had overborrowed which you can still do. So that's that's number one thing to keep in mind. We overborrowed about 27,000 on the purchase um, and that helped take care of co uh, closing costs and, and uh, not just closing costs, but rehab costs and uh, holding costs and things like that, that were involved. Um, and we still have most of that left over because we were gonna do a full rehab, which was gonna be around 27,000. And we decided to do a minor rehab basically a deep clean and, and repainting a few spots and things like that. And I'll show you what, what happened uh, on that. So the house was sold for, we put it on the market for 650,000. And the offer that came in, we had three offers uh, within the first 24 hours. And we took an offer for 500, for 675,000. So 25,000 over asking price. So 675 was the sale price. And that was a loan. In other words, the buyer had a loan, but they were pre-approved, uh, that type of thing. The other two offers were all cash, but they were lower. One was close to the 650, a little bit below, and one was down quite a bit lower from another investor, but still above 600. Uh, this was a loan and this does have a few contingencies, not a lot. Uh, but the buyer on his own, this buyer originally offered 650 and then they moved it up to 675 so that they stood out above the rest of the group so that uh, obviously we'd give this more attention. So we did that. So this house, when it's all said and done, netting is going to net around $140,000. We put it on the market last Friday, sold it on Saturday. It's going to close by the end of the month. So about $140,000 net. Uh, this is the kind of deal that you can do out there right now if you buy them right, if you find the right deal. Now, once again, this is kind of the opposite of what we saw in El Dorado Hills. You've got a situation here where it's a high demand area. This is a little bit of a unique property, um, but and it's not a traditional rehab, uh, but a little bit less. Now, when you see the pictures, I'm going to show you the pictures that are coming up. You're going to say, oh, gross. Or I would because I looked at it and I didn't actually look at the property until it was on the market, believe it or not. Um, my partners looked at it and uh, they thought what you're going to see is okay. But and evidently it was because it got an overbid type situation. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Are we looking at the Wisconsin property? Yep. Let's take a look at that. And let's, I'll, I'll show you what this house actually looks like. Now, keep in mind, we I borrowed... We're going to, there's 59 pictures here. We're going to kind of cruise through them pretty quickly. We had borrowed enough. Uh, you can keep cruising through there and you can see these, these color schemes are like hideous in my opinion. We could have gotten a lot more had we redone all the surfaces. We did a deep clean. We left the carpets in there where there was holes in the wall. We repainted, patch repainted. Um, you know, there's even little dings and the carpet is shitty in my opinion. It's bad carpet. It's gross. Um, some of the color, I mean, everything's mix and match. Uh, I would not have given this amount. Now, this is a five bedroom, four bath, 4,200 square foot with 10 acres. And it's in what's called horse country there. So it's something that somebody obviously is interested in. Uh, nice, nice house uh, in, in horrible need of, you know, upgrading. Now the, the realtor, we use a real estate agent and they were, as we always talk, they were our quarterbacks along the way. And they told us what we need to do. 
Um, and, you know, they, they wanted all the treatments, uh, the surfaces redone and that type of thing, you know, making all the floors the same and redoing the countertops and repainting everything the same color. It's just, I, I don't know what was going through these people's mind. It looks great on the outside, but, um, and it's a nice property when you look at it from the, you know, the tall view, we'll get to that here in a second. Um, you know, it's a big area, uh, wooded, uh, area in the back and that type of thing. So it's, you know, it's a nice uh, property and it's definitely worth 675. We probably could have got seven and a quarter for it. Uh, had we gone in and spent the 25,000. So we left 50,000, let's say on the table, maybe more by not spending 25, but we spent two and we made 140. So, you know, you're sometimes it's a case of pigs eat and hogs get slaughtered and you don't want to be hoggy on these deals. So these are the kind of deals that you can find out there. This was a Facebook lead, uh, went through our regular process. Same thing all you guys get. Um, we, we will entertain cash deals, uh, however, because um, we have access to the loans. In this case, uh, we were able to overborrow on this thing. And uh, I would keep my eyes open for any of these kinds. Of, this is a combination of creative financing. This is transactional engineering at its best because it's not really a cash thing because, or not, not a total rehab, because we didn't do a total rehab. We just did a kind of spit shine. There just happened to not be any properties for sale in that area. This kind of property, this large thing in the country, 10 acres, horse property was in demand. Uh, so you just never know. You think, you would think that something like El Dorado Hills, where these people are selling their two and $3 million houses in San Jose and moving east of Sacramento to El Dorado Hills would have stayed up. But it turns out when you run that clock back, people aren't selling for as much in San Jose. And so they're not moving for as much over to El Dorado Hills. And it's uh, a lot of the people who were selling in San Jose uh, have in fact bumped from moving to the Sacramento area to moving to Utah or Idaho, or now the big thing for Californians is to move to Tennessee or Florida. And so, you know, a lot of that money's coming out of the state and it's making these markets here in California drop at a much faster rate. Places like Wisconsin, people are moving to, still moving to now. And they moved out in the country during COVID to get away from, you know, the neighbors, but that trend seems to be holding. So it's very unique. If you keep your eyes open, there are all kinds of deals out there in good markets and bad markets where you can make money. Uh, but you've got to keep your eyes and ears open and you can, um, and then manage it properly. Uh, I was surprised. I mean, I knew we'd get, you know, multiple offers. I frankly was expecting offers to come in around six. Um, you know, the, the comps were at that 675 number. I mean, that was right at where the comps are on that property. But uh, it was me. I wouldn't have bought it with looking that hideous. But then again, I'm lazy. I want the work done for me. Um, people, I guess, are willing to take it with carpet that looks like that and walls that are in 17 different shades of fuchsia. Um, you know, good for them. I mean, it's great. It's it's a nice house. It's really structurally, it's sound. It's a great area, that kind of thing. But it's, uh, it, to me, it reminded me of where the market was in most of the country a year ago not where it is today. So in my, my point here on this news you can use tonight is there, it's all over the board. Uh, if you want to make the case that the market's still going up and you're going to get overbids, Wisconsin is a great example. If you want to make a case that the market is crashing and that it's off 25% from where it was even in December, four or five months ago, you can make that looking at El Dorado Hills. It is all over the board. Um, but if you keep your wits about you and you are careful about what you do and what you look at and you make sure that you bid far enough down so that you're covered for when you sell that you're at that lower tranche, you will uh, be able to make money in this market because there is still buyers out there. There are still cash buyers. They're just not everywhere. They're in certain areas. So I keep my eyes and ears open. We're doing a lot of work in uh, Arkansas. And next week, I'll show you, probably next Thursday, I'll show you uh, one of the rehabs we're doing. Uh, as I've mentioned before, rehabs or mini rehabs, these kind of prehabby type things like we just did at that Wisconsin house are really kind of the way to go because there are still buyers out there. If you drop it a little bit below market, they'll bid that thing up. 
and they're willing to get in there and do elbow grease. Now that has not been the case the last 10 years or at least the last seven uh, where people have wanted, like I just described myself, they have wanted everything to be perfect when they move in. People today are willing to take a little bit less quality in exchange for a little elbow grease that they'll do on their own at a reduced price. And you're gonna see more and more of that coming up. And that still gives you guys a great opportunity to make a lot of money in this market. All right, that's our news you can use for tonight. Sorry, I ran a little long, but I wanted to show you, we get questions all the time. What are we actually doing out there? And uh, there's some examples of uh, you know, projects that we've got uh, cooking right now.